Salutations. I am Tampa, goddess of summer. I'm here to tell you how summer was created. Once upon a time, way back before time, in the primordial ooze days, everything was black and ooze. I was not around. It was not my time. But everything was void and without form. And the presiding deities of the time were small, shrimp-like creatures. And they were not very predisposed to anything other than ooze. It took a long, long time for interstellar space alien deities, or some spirits of who the hell knows what that's out there, to convince these small shrimp-like deities of the ooze to do some kind of freaking thing other than ooze. And the first thing they did was they invented the waters. Now, I know what you are thinking. You are thinking waters uh, like uh, what's off the Santa Monica Pier. Or, you know, you go to Atlantic City and you duck your toes in. And then, you know, they're snicked off immediately by some floating piece of garbage or that frickin' roller coaster that's still frickin' sitting out there off the shore from Hurricane Sandy. This is not the waters I'm speaking of. The waters were also void and without form, except that they were moist. So what are you gonna do? You got ooze and you got the waters. And the shrimp gods were happy because the waters covered the ooze. So you had ooze and water and shrimp deities. Well, someone pointed out, I don't know who, I, maybe there was water and then, like, there were deities of water. Because, frankly, here's the big freaking secret. You don't have a thing without a deity of it, all right? The Japanese got it right. They know. Everything has a kami. A kami is a spirit of a thing. You watch that uh, Miyazaki movie, okay, about the, the chick, the little girl who gets stuck in a bathhouse. Not what you're thinking, gay men. And uh, there's a spirit of a radish and a spirit of a, I don't know, a, a thong. I don't know what there is. Spirits. The ja everything has a spirit. So if there's a thing, then by default, there's a spirit. Thing. Woo, spirit, woo, Pac-Man, rah, rah, rah. Okay, you get the idea. So there's water and there's ooze. The shrimp deities are the ooze gods. And then there's water. So there's some kind of deity, spirit, kami, whatever. And there's so many kami that the Shinto priests are called kami-nists. That, that was on me. So there's water. Ooze and water, right? So the water deities, who look something like a, a cross between a, a hydra and a vagina, they go to the shrimp deities and they're like, look, ooze girls, uh, what, it's all nice and good to have the ooze under us, but we're the water, right? So we only go so far. We're going to need something to like define us because we're void and without form. And, you know, frankly... All of a sudden, there's you and there's us. And before there was just you, where the hell did we come from? So, you know, right there, we've got some kind of weird dichotomy. And it's unnerving us because we don't get it because it's just you. And so we need a little definition. So we need you to help us make something that defines us and contains us. So the shrimp ooze gods and the hydro vagina gods got together, and they made earth, dirt, continents, okay? So then all of a sudden, the ooze is under the waters, and the waters are surrounded by the continents. Now, I know you're going to say, some of you are going to say, no, Tampa, goddess of summer, 
The continents are surrounded by the water. Okay, that's science, and that's now, okay? Somewhere, somewhere around 1100, someone, like, decided to define the world as round and watery with land popping up. That's what it all changed. But back in the day, it was all water surrounded by continents, okay? And you're like, how can that be? Tampa, are you a Flat Earth Society member? And I'm like, screw you. No, I'm not. Okay, the whole thing is that reality is as you think it. Okay, there's some videos on YouTube. Sister Unity has some reality as you think it. Just look that up. Okay, but basically, if you think it so, it is so. Italian author Pirandello. I went to college. Okay, I'm the goddess of summer, and everyone's out of school there. But what do you think I did during the fall and winter? Huh? I went to school. Pirandello's an Italian playwright. Look that up on Google. So. Ooze, water, continents, oit. Okay, so the oit gods, okay, I don't know if you've noticed, but there's every kind of freaking dirt in the world. Okay, you got your sand, you got your loam, you got your clay, you got your uh, whatever they've got in Mauritania. I don't know what it is, red earth, okay? You've got what they got in Europe that's rocky. You've got, I mean, rocks? You want to talk rocks? Granite, feldspar, shale, schist. Not to mention the jewels, okay? So, first of all, what you have to understand is that the oi didn't just appear, okay? The ooze gods had to do a trick to make the oi appear, okay? What they did was they pissed off the world. They pissed it right the fuck off. And the earth got so mad that it started to squeeze pimples out its ass or something. And there were volcanoes. On the bottom of the, like up through the ooze, into the water, and then it pop, pop, popped up from the water and made all of this earth. So at first, it was very hot because the earth was pissed. Okay. But eventually it cooled to make the continents, and then you had the three the earth, the ooze, and the water. So the earth, we've established. When it cooled, okay, laws of physics, it did a lot of crap, okay? First, it was rocks, and then there were jewels and crystals, because that's what happens when you cool freaking pissed-off earth juice. And then, um, then there was dirt, okay? Now, the way dirt happened, okay, the way dirt happened was some of the earth spirits were like, okay, we're good. We've got our feldspar, we're done. The basalt spirit, the god of basalt, Tony, he was particularly settled in. Okay, he was like, I'm just staying here. New York City will be built on top of me. Okay, they're not, and, and I will line driveways. Okay, so he was done. But there were others, okay, like Quartz. Quartz was like, I'm solid. I could just stay as I am. But you know what? I'm fabulous. Look at my crystals. I'm fabulous. You think I'm just sitting here underneath everything with the basalt? Uh, honey, his name is Tony. My name is Charlene, okay? Quartz goddess's name is Charlene. And she was like, Charlene's do not sit under the earth, Tony. I am going out. And so she had an affair with the water gods, okay? Now, here's the thing. The water gods are mostly, but not all, mostly female. So it was a lesbian affair. So if anyone tells you that homosexuality is unnatural, right here. Because I'm telling you, at the beginning, it was Charlene, the goddess of quartz, and the water gods, the female water gods. Okay, you know, I'm just saying it's natural because it formed, it freaking formed everything that's on the land. And here's how. So quartz Charlene, okay, she's done with the boinking the water goddess. Then, okay, she, because she had all this boinking with the water goddess, water, powerful solvent. You give it enough time, it's going to wear down even quartz. Quartz became little grains of sand. Okay, you all know sand. Okay, so then we've got a new goddess because it's a new thing. The goddess of sand is Sandy. It's not just a hurricane. Pay attention to your mythology. It's going to be a quiz. So Sandy from Charlene, right? Then 
then, right, the sand is all fine, right? So stuff can infiltrate it. So the water gets in there. Who do you think else gets in there? Who do you think is looking at the relationship between Charlene and uh, the water goddess? And I know I should be giving her a name. She didn't have one. None of the water spirits had names, okay? They were too free-floating. They were like, I am not settling down for labels. This is a lot like gender in this day and age, okay? I'm up there. I'm the sun. I'm looking, okay? And I see what's going on, okay? Back in the day, like about 30 years ago, it was like, I don't want any labels. Do not label me. I'm just I'm just whatever I, whatever I am, okay? And I'll sleep with whatever I sleep with. Nowadays, they're like, not only am I queer, but I am a non-binary, cis-trans, vitamin B, salamander. It's all very, very, you know, particular about self-identification. And why not? You know, free country, except for Russia and a few other places. Free country, you do it, you know, you define who you are as you are. It's yours to express. Everyone, you tell everyone what your pronouns are. My pronoun is Tampa. It's my name. It's my pronoun. So, like this, okay, um, the, the, the ooze gods are getting jealous of the water and Charlene and Sandy. And so the ooze gods go to visit Sandy. Okay. And the ooze gods and the water gods and Sandy were all like together. Well, ooze gods are fertile. I mean, they are freaking fertile. Okay. They gave rise to the water gods. They're fertile. Like, they're just like, they're, they're, they're a womb. They're a womb. So sand, ooze, and water creates life. Okay, so all the science that they're telling you that we all came from the ooze is perfectly, perfectly, acceptably correct. It started with bacteria, okay, then you had trilobites, etc. Yes, each one of those had a goddess. If, do not bother me for the names. Look them up in the register. Google. Google exists for a reason, okay? Yes, there's a god of Google. His name is asshole. I don't know. Just look it up. So, so life starts, okay. Now, here's the thing. Water is really changeable, okay? Uh, uh, Sandy had millions and millions of parts, billions of parts, okay? There was more Sandy's parts than there are stores, okay? The stores are manifold. There's many stores. There's, there was more pieces of Sandy than there's stores. So um, all this diversity gave rave, r rise to all sorts of forms of life. Okay, some were male, some were female, some were agender, some were duo gender, some were triple gender. I mean, they had genders that you can't even conceive of, okay, because you have a mind and it's in a skull and it's limited. They had like millions and millions of working parts to create life forms like you cannot believe. If you really want to get into it, become a biologist and study bacteria. I'm telling you, it's where it's at. Bacteria will feed the world. Do, do, I'm telling you. Tyson's chicken is getting into bacteria. So they're starting with salmonella. They're going to find an edible form of it. And we will all be eating bacteria-based meat in like 30 years. I'm just telling you. Okay, so life has sprung, right? So there's life. And as I said, every time there's a thing, there's a god. But here's the thing. Gods are spirits of a large amount of crap. Okay, so water, there's a lot of it. So big gods, right? Ooze, lot of it. Gigantic shrimp gods, right? If it's a big thing, there's a god. If there's a lot of little crap, you get spirits. Okay, that's the difference between gods and spirits. It's like in Christmas, Christmasiani, the religion with uh, Jesus. You've got a god for the whole shebang, right? But there's departments, okay? Pay attention to the Catholics because the Calvinists, they just limit it down and there's only a God because it's just a God and some spare furniture and a gray sweater. That's all the Calvinists got. So it's one God. But the Catholics have got like all kinds of crap, right? You ever been in a Catholic church? All kinds of crap. So they have got angels and saints, which is the same thing as a spirit. It's the same thing, okay? So... God, spirits, God, saints, whatever. So you get the idea. It's a hierarchy. It's a breakdown. So big things, God, diverse things, spirits. So spirits of bacteria, trilobites, plants, ferns, pine trees, all that early stuff. 
Then along come all kinds of more diversifications. You get dinosaurs, the space aliens by this time who encounter the ooze gods. The space aliens this time are like, okay, we don't know what the fuck happened, okay? We gave you one piece of advice to just a little minimal diversification, so you're sort of matching the rest of us, and now you've got all this frickin' stuff crawling all over your ass, okay? That We don't like it, it's too much for us, and they send a comet, kaboom! Farewell, diversity, but here's the fucking thing. They're space aliens, and like the Wicked Witch of the West in uh, uh, Munchkin Land... They have no real power here, and so the healing force, the Glinda of life, no, the goddess of life is not named Glinda, okay? Goddess of life is Enid. Enid is the goddess of life. Duh, it's obvious. Enid is like, okay, you cut my hair, but, you know, there's too much of me, and this is my home turf, so alien gods... We're going to discover you years later when we send Voyager out there. But for now, you can fuck the fuck off. And she regrows everything all based on like a marmoset. Okay. She makes marmosets into mammoths and saber-toothed tigers and people. And she makes them into people. And the uh, the dinosaurs that didn't die okay, became chickens. Because you've all heard that chickens are dinosaurs, right? Y you ever seen a mouse get into a chicken pen? Those bitches will peck that fucking thing to death and eat it whole. How well? How will? Mouse in chicken shits out egg. You're eating mice when you eat eggs. I'm just saying, chickens are bitches. Why? Because they're dinosaurs! Tyrannosaurus rex reed is a chicken these days. So, you've got the boids, you've got the lizards, and you've got the people. You've got mama sets, lemurs, and people. So the people kill all the mammoths and the saber-toothed tigers, and they push them into tar pits, and now you've got a museum, and whatever happens, happens. Okay. So cut to centuries later. The people are all over the land. They tried to live in the water, but the water gods are like, Honey, we are ancient gods, and you're some new motherfucker that just showed up. Okay, so you can fuck the fuck out. And they do not let the people develop gills and swim around in them, and they're very happy with all the fish and the porpoises and whatnot. Now, there were mermen and mermaids at one point, and mer uh, transgenders, there were mer asexuals, there were um, uh, mer, um, uh, what do you call the word? Uh, Mer everything. So we're like mer people with penises and covered all over them and then vaginas in between the penises. There was mer everything. So uh, the sea was quite happy with that, except that they tried to build cities and then they were looking too much like the land people and the sea was like, no, sorry. And uh, I don't know what they did. I mean, they can't drown them, right? I don't know what they did, but I think volcanoes were involved. But it, it someone has told me that all the mer people were turned into giant clams at the bottom of the Atlantic. I don't know. I'm not a, a, a water spirit. The people on the ice have eaten all the mammoths, right? And so they start to civilize now because there's not there's mammoth poop all over the place. And they discovered how foil it is because they, you know, seeds are growing out of the mammoth poop and somehow that's involved in agriculture. And I don't know because I wasn't alive then. But agriculture develops, right? So, so, then, in Greece, okay, this, like, teenage wench, this Miss Thing, okay, she gets a bee in her bonnet, right? First. She goes down to the underworld, okay? Her name is Percy Phone, okay? Do not give me Persephone. That is a later complete bastardization of her name. Her name in the ancient tongue was Percy Phone, okay? And here's the thing. She's a fag. She's a guy. Percy. Phone was his last name, okay? So... Percy Phone goes down into the underworld. Hades did not kidnap Percy. Hades was down in his underworld, because why the hell should he come up? Because Zeus is like, zap, with lightning, or I don't know what. 
So Hades is... Hades, I think Hades was hiding down there because Zeus wanted, you know, Zeus swings both ways. He wanted to Ganymede Hades' ass because he's his brother and he's got to show dominance. He killed his father. What, you think he's not trying to pork his brother to show some kind of like, I'm the god of gods, I'm in charge here? We all know that aggressive men have resorted to sodomy as a kind of control mechanism over other men, which, frankly, is far more heterosexual than it is homosexual. Homosexuals are just like, they just they just want to have fun. Cindy Lauper, they just want to have fun. So, Percy goes into the underworld thinking, I don't know, he's going to find some new kind of bag to, he can wear to the clubs or whatever. And Hades is like, hey, what's up? You're kind of cute. And Percy's like, hey, I like dark men, you know, mysterious and brooding. So why don't I hang out with you? Okay. And Hades is like, okay, that's totally cool. And they hit it off and they're an item, right? But then Demi, uh, Demi comes down. Uh, no, not Demi Moore. That's her current incarnation. Demi Meter. So Demi comes down and she's like, okay, look, okay, Percy's a little young to be coupling, all right? I know this is Greece, but he's 12. I don't know how old he was. I made that up. So so I, Demi goes, he's coming back out to, with me because he's got to do his SAT standardized testing or he's not getting into a good school. So Hades works out this thing, okay, because he knows that Demi's going to be an in-law for the rest of eternity. So he's like, okay, he goes to see you half the year. He stays with me half the year. I don't know. It's Greek. I'm not even of Greek extraction. I'm, I'm universal. And so there's the halves of the years, right? Okay. So now I know all of you are thinking that's where summer comes from. No, wrong, wrong, wrong. That is where spring and autumn come from. Spring is planting. And that's when Demi does her thing. Fall is harvesting. And that's when Demi... Uh, when uh, Percy leaves and goes back to see Hades, okay? So it was just spring and fall for centuries. You haven't been to Greece. They do not have a winter. I'm just saying, okay? So later, okay, later, there was this absolutely queer spirit of land, okay? That was, it was like some like love child of basalt and feldspar or something. I don't know. I wasn't there. But anyway, he was gay, right? And he gets kicked out of his home because I told you about basalt, right? You think basalt's putting up with something different in his life? No, he's basalt. So this whole piece of land breaks off and, and is like, I am out. I'm going to seek my happiness and is drawn to the high life. And so it lands on one of the poles, okay? The top of the globe, the highest point of the globe, which is, of course, the South Pole, and lives there. And uh, I think later you call him, uh, because he beca he's ages and he becomes like an older gay gentleman, and you, so you call him your Aunt Arctica. What? Yeah, top of the world, South Pole. Oh, you're American. I'm talking to Americans. Oh, you think it's the North Pole. Boy, have you got that wrong? Honey, have you gone out into space? No, no, honey. It's the South Pole. The South Pole is the top of the world. I'm a goddess. I think I know. So, faggy aunt Arctica is got his own place there at the top of the world, right? But here's the thing. He's so loving, and he's so giving, and he's so fabulous. He invents penguins as ambassadors, okay? And he sends penguins out into the world to be ambassadors. And the penguins go with the message for all the world to say, if you are like me and you are different, there's a place for you. Come be snowy with me, okay? Because, you know, fags in the old days, they all did snow. If you don't believe me, just spend some time in New York going into gay history. So the penguin ambassadors go all throughout the world, okay? And some of the places are like really religious and they reject it. And some of the places are like, right on, I get that. And it just so happens that like places like Scandinavia, Canada, these are all liberal places. And so they accept the penguins and the penguins say, great, we bring you the gifts of your Antarctica. And that's when winter happens in those places. All the places where there are Catholics are like, no, honey, we're conservative. No, 
penguins. We do not want your gift. And that is why there is no winter in those places where the Catholics took over. Uh, Uruguay, Honduras, Italy. Right? What? India? Well, you don't think Hinduism is orthodox? Oh, Americans, please listen to me. You think Hinduism is some great new liberal thing because your experience of it is through the hippie movement and they were liberals. But I'm telling you, go to India and tell them you're gay and see how far you get. You know, go into a temple and tell them that you're gay or a woman and see how far you get. I'm just telling you, it's tough over there. Yeah. Now, they made strides in recent, you know, there's that beautiful prince guy. Love him. Love him. So anyway, Penguin Ambassadors brought winter to liberal places, which were all in the north, okay, and the Orthodox religions in the uh, places around uh, the, uh, the equator areas didn't uh, rejected this gift, right? So, so, Mississippi, I'm just telling you. So, Winter's established, okay, and there's a god of winter, okay, his name is Chicago. And he's the god of winter, and he's a total and complete asshole to me. He's an asshole. I know a lot of people get along with him. A lot of people like him. Auntie Arctica loves him, okay? We just have this thing, because when we were little, he peed on my sandwich, and I have never forgiven him. So, okay, here's where I'm coming. I'm coming up. I'm coming along soon. Okay, so... Spring and autumn are the big guiding seasons, right? And then winter's like, you know, here or there, not everywhere, okay? Right. So the penguins all go back to Antarctica once they finish their job of being ambassadors. And they leave behind a few consulates of polar bears and, and Arctic foxes and whatnot to be ambassadors of winter, whatever. So Antarctica's got her whole troop, right? Okay, great. Well, here's the thing, okay? There are some places where bisexuals are not orthodox, but they can pass, okay? And they're not complete liberal winterists either because they like both, okay? So bisexuals settle this whole region like the United States is so much made of, okay, Europe, similar, China, Japan, okay, in the Northern Hemisphere, where let's face it, so much of the man less is. Then there's like Melbourne and New Zealand and like Cape Town and Patagonia. No, Patagonia is still a little wintry. I'm going to say just like south of Buenos Aires, like about a thousand miles south of Buenos Aires or Santiago. 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 Okay. Santiago, not San Diego. I'm talking Chile, where you get your blueberries, Americans. So, all these places are bisexual. Culturally, I don't know what they are sexually. I'm not talking about sex. I'm talking about... I'm talking about the spirit of someone's persona. So all those people are right there, right? So there's people there and there's a consciousness now that there's been a dialect it's set up between the the, the liberals winter and the conservative uh, hot places. Because um, it's not summer, okay? It's not summer. It's just hot. It's just hot. That's not summer. That's just hot. So, but then there's these places, okay? And these people are like, okay, since we're all binary or... In your parlance, they, I think of them as binary, but it's a binary where you don't sit on one side. It's binary, meaning it is both together at the same time. That's what the word used to mean. These days, college kids, go figure. I don't know. Talk to your friends who are professors. They'll, well, they won't straighten it out, but they'll get it. Okay, whatever. So, every time there's a thing, there's a goddess. And so, those people who are like, we are both are like, well, we're winter. And just because they say there's that one thing, because they are two natured people, spitang! I am born, I pop into, okay, I'm not born. Summer is born as a concept. And then it springs into actual existence. There are, it, and it's fit right in the remaining spot on the calendar between spring and fall because it has to be opposite winter because these are people who are binary. They operate on a binary uh, world where they are both things. So shebang, you see how that works? Sacred hand mudra. 
And because then there's the thing of summer, that's when I'm born. Because if there's a thing, there's a god. And Tampa's your girl! That is how summer was born. And I will tell you what. It's coming up soon, baby. And I love my children and my worshippers. And that is why I have gay pride, trans pride, bisexual pride, asexual pride, put a ferret in your ass pride, are all celebrated in the heat of moi. Okay, Palm Springs in Las Vegas, I hear you. You have your prides in the little cooler in the autumn, but that's fine. Okay, I understand. That's just a matter of getting your ass burned or something because it's a little too, it's too, too. Sorry. Not my domain, not my fault. You were raised by angry stone gods that were like, I have to be heated all the time. I'm outside the volcano. I just need to be heated. But for the rest of my children, Tampa loves you. So I admonish you this summer in my realm, remember me and party hearty and get your Tampa on. I want all of you. Male, female, intersex, asex, ferret sex, to get your tampon on. Just get it on.